Welcome back to another construct video and in this video we're looking at how to add a conveyor belt so we can allow our player to get across this gap. So let's get started. First thing you notice is I've got a conveyor belt already. The only thing that's on here is a really really simple animation that flicks between these two frames. Apart from that nothing else has been added. So let's start by adding some stuff to our conveyor belt. We don't need any behaviors but we do need some instance variables. We'll start off with direction. Direction determines which way our conveyor belt will face, either left or right. So one is going to be right, minus one will be left. I'm going to set it to default to always go right. I'm going to add a new instance variable and I'm going to say power. And power is going to be how powerful our conveyor belt is. The larger the number, the faster it will shoot our player across the level. If the number is too big and this is only looking about 20 or 30, our player also will not be able to move backwards on it, it will only get pushed forward. So there's our first two variables that we need to get started. We can now jump straight into our code. So what we want to do is check if our player is overlapping the conveyor belt. If our player is overlapping the conveyor belt, we want to do a couple of things. So first thing we want to do is take our player and we want to set vector x. Now all a vector x does is check which way it's going. So when you hold down the right key, it sets the vector x value to one. I'm gonna start by taking the absolute value of player dot platform dot vector x. What it's essentially doing is taking the value of vector x and the absolute means it will turn it into a positive number. So if it's positive or minus, it will always be a positive. And that's really important for what we want to do with it. We're then going to add Conveyor belt dot power. This is taking the conveyor belt that we're overlapping. And then we want to surround all of this in brackets and timed it by the conveyor belt dot direction. And again, this will choose if we're going positive or minus, and we'll choose which way we're going. So we've got that set up. Next thing we want to do is find the default speed of our player. So we're going to go to player, and its max speed is set to 300. So what I want to do is add an action. It takes our player and we want to set the max speed and we want this to be 300 plus the conveyor belt dot power. This means that we're taking whatever number that is which is 50. Now our max speed will be 350 so we've got a little bit of a speed boost compared to what we had before. But of course the higher the power number the faster that will increase. So we've got that set up and now if we do our test we be a little bit quicker when going across the conveyor belt. Now we don't really see that because we're only traveling an extra 50. But what we can do is increase this value to say 400. And then this will be a much more noticeable effect. So you see more than enough to cover that gap. And if I try and go against the conveyor belt, I'm always getting pushed back. And then again, we've got more than enough to clear that gap with the new speed from the conveyor belt. Big problem we've got now is that we're keeping that speed no matter what. So even when we get to the other side, we're still traveling at that new max speed. So first thing I'm going to do is add a new variable to my conveyor belt. So instance variable, and I'm gonna call this slowdown rate. And we could just set this as a flat number. But I quite like the ability to change and customize this for each conveyor belt. So you can have some conveyor belts in your level that stop the player straight away and others that carry that momentum through for quite a long time. So we've got our slowdown rate implemented. What we're going to do now is go to our event sheets and we're going to add a new global variable. And this global variable is also going to be called slowdown rate. So anytime we're on the conveyor belt, we want to actually store that value of the slowdown rate in our new variable. So we're going to go system, set value of slowdown rate to conveyor belt dot slowdown rate. So we've got that stored even if we're not on the conveyor belt. We can then add a new action to our player and check if they're overlapping the conveyor belt again. Only difference with this line of code is going to right click and invert it. So we're checking if they're off the conveyor belt now. If so, we want to do one line of code. So we're going to take our player, scroll down, and we're going to set the max speed. Currently the max speed is set to our default max speed, which is 300, plus 
whatever power we've got. So let's say our power is 400, max speed is now 700. We want to slowly bring that down. So instead of just stopping it straight away, so the player comes to almost an abrupt stop, we want to apply our slowdown rate so over time the player slows down. So how do we do this? I'm going to introduce a function called clamp. This is going to make our life really, really simple because it means that our player will keep slowing down until they get back to their default value, which is 300. So first thing we need is we need player.platform.speed and we're going to minus our slowdown rate. So over time, we're going to slow down. So we're going to put a comma now. It's going to ask for our lower band, which is our default value being 300, and our upper band, which is just going to be player.platform.maxspeed. And that's it set up. We can now have our conveyor belt. And let's have a look at some options we can change. So first of all, let's go left. I can put minus one. I'm going to keep it just at one. We've got our power, so how fast we're going. We're going to put this up to a really silly number, so 2,000. And then our slowdown rate, I'm going to start by leaving this at 20, and then we'll do a test with this being much higher. And again, this is how fast we slow down once we leave a conveyor belt. So test this first one. And you'll see that I've kept some speed for a little bit, but not for too long. If I take the slowdown rate and I put this down to 5, so I'm slowing down a little bit slower than what I did before, you see that I can keep that speed all the way to the end there. So again, the smaller that number is, the longer that we keep our conveyor belt speed for. Final thing I'm going to show you is what happens if you want this as a platform instead. So I'm going to raise this up slightly and I'm going to add the solid behavior. Now, if we've got the solid behavior added, we cannot make use of overlapping because you cannot overlap something that you cannot physically overlap or go through. All we're going to do is change this line of code and instead of saying overlap conveyor belt, we're going to change it to overlapping at offset. So the conveyor belt, I'm going to set the Y offset to 1. I'm going to copy and paste this line of code to here and then just invert it. And that's how we can set it up as a platform. So that's just something I can physically stand on. And again, it will still push us, it will still keep the same settings. And if you really want, you can have this as two completely separate uh, objects. One for one you can overlap, one for one that you can't. You just copy and paste that line of code. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment what other videos you'd like to see. I'll see you in the next video.